Uh, so I think it was last week or maybe a couple weeks ago. I sort of flippantly said that it wasn't okay to wear shorts on stage. And I don't think it was flippant. I feel like we actually talked about this at length. We did talk about it at length, but I mean to say I sort of spoke from the assumption that everyone understood where I was coming from. And Uh, right. I I and since then I've been sort of like not only has everyone on the nation lost it on me, but I've started running Exclaim Media's uh, Canada's Music and Film and Comedy Authority's Twitter account. And I did a poll on there that I also did on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> and everyone was losing it. And a lot of people were saying that shorts are not okay on stage. But somebody else did reply and say that um, telling people <laughs> this is real. I don't remember who it was or on which medium. But someone did reply and say telling people what they can wear on stage is a form of clothing racism or something. <laughs> it was like a <laughs> sincere yeah, reply. <laughs> Truly incredible. But I've just really been like actually like losing sleep about it because the reaction has been so strong from some people whose opinions I respect as well. And I just want to clarify where I'm coming from, which is that I truly do think that it's not okay to wear shorts on stage <laughs> unless... And this is, I'll explain this in a second, but I'm going to say, unless you are a hardcore band, then you can play, wear shorts on stage. And now, in my mind, hardcore is not just a genre, but it's a way of life. And so, if your band has non-binary or non-male people in your band, then you're a hardcore band. If your band is Vampire Weekend and you're doing genre tourism and doing things ironically until they become cool then you're a hardcore band. So you're allowed to wear shorts on stage because Ezra wears shorts on stage <laughs> right, now. Okay. And, you know, I mean, if you're a hardcore band, if, you're, if you are just a bunch of, like, cis dudes playing actual hardcore music, then you're allowed to wear shorts on stage. But everyone else, if you're not in some form of what I call a hardcore band, which is basically either actual <laughs> hardcore or someone who's, like, having dalliances in corny genres and making them cool, or not all straight white male band, then you're not... They're allowed to wear shorts. Everyone else is not allowed. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Welcome to Blink-155, the only Blink-182 podcast on the entire internet, now officially coming to you from the only two good cities in Canada. Of course, (laughs) I'm talking about uh, Edmonton and Lethbridge. No, it's me in Toronto and Josiah Hughes from his new home in La Belle Provence, Montreal, Quebec. Josiah, how much pizza getty have you had in the last last couple of days now you know, that you when, are officially a francophone? When I hung out with you in Montreal, we were in like a completely different area of Montreal that I've never been to before and will probably never go again because I'm just here (laughs) absorbing all of the bougie coffee and all of the enamel pin stores and just everyone is so hip and wonderful and so I don't I mean I've I don't think I'll ever experience Sam's Montreal again until you come here but I was gonna say like somehow we're in the same time zone but yet this has been the most difficult pod to schedule possibly ever (laughs) well yeah um (laughs) So so let's uh, let's let's look at sort of what's transpired over the last forty eight hours as we've attempted to to record what we thought would be amongst our easiest of pods. Um, <laughs> you opened your computer yesterday after arriving in your new uh, home. Home? How do you say home en français? I'm not, I'm not going to learn any French. I'm here exclusively to gentrify <laughs> as much as possible. So I'm, I'm not going to learn any. I'm reading a book right now about the FLQ crisis, and like now I'm thinking it might be sort of fun if in, instead of you just becoming like a sort of speed an adult, you know, uh, bike courier, that maybe you should actually become like a radical separatist, you know, putting, you know, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> mail bombs, like the whole, the whole, you know, kidnapping politicians and stuff. Like I think like a truly radical Josiah, uh, like French <laughs> separatist Josiah, would be like an exciting new incarnation of your personality. I'm into it. I'm ready for that vibe. Um, I was worried. I was thinking. I was genuinely thinking because our new apartment is so wonderful. Um, Kristen and Matthew from The Nation, I got to shout them out because we actually took over their lease. Which yeah, is just I cannot get over that. The pod is. Um, and they like were, the pod they were, literally is like your home 
and, <laughs> and literally your home, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and th- so they were amazing helping us sort of transition into moving into their place. And it was super awesome. So shout out to them. Um, thank you so much for your help. Um, and then I was thinking, like, there, there's such a beautiful apartment you, there's a nice boom in here because I'm no longer in like a dark cave where I used to pod somehow. Even though my old apartment was so much bigger, there was like no windows. And so now there's just like a cool breeze all the time. Everything's so nice. And then I was thinking like, is the pod going to get bad if I'm too happy? <laughs> like, is oh, that going to wow. be an issue? <laughs> do, do I need to hate my existence to actually want to pour this much effort into this? I guess that's what we'll find out. Like, you can know if, starting from this episode onward, if I'm too happy... Um, that, that's why. (laughs) So, so I was like, okay, shit. So that stuff arrived, but what didn't arrive yet was, um, our 27 inch iMac, which you can't take on the plane because you can't check it and it's too big to take as a carry on. And you can't really ship it if you don't own the box. But I thought to myself, oh, I'll just go to the UPS store. They, don't, they have all this packaging shit. They know how to do everything. Um, and long story short, it is, my iMac is completely, like, demolished. Oh, like, it showed up. It looks like someone has kicked it with steel toe boots. Because oh, you so, and I were supposed this is the thing, you and I were supposed to record yesterday, and you were like, okay, I just gotta like un- unload our, like, as long as my computer gets here, and you're like, okay, it's here, it should be fine. And then it was like early evening, and I got a message from you that was like, oh shit, is there any chance we can do the pod tomorrow? Because my computer is like completely destroyed, and I'm <laughs> kind of freaking out. And I was like, yeah, man, like, handle your shit, we'll figure it out. And then I didn't hear from you for 24 hours, which is like an incredible, <laughs> like, I was like, Josiah has just like, thrown himself upon the cross of Mont Royal, you know. <laughs> right. Just, no, it's because I'm taking photos of our computer so that I can deal with UPS insurance, which, like, those two things together don't sound like they're going to be very fun to deal no, with. No, that sounds like a... <laughs> that sounds quite ominous. You're entering, like, a true sort of just, like, cavern of, uh, like, a Kafka-esque bureaucratic nightmare. He's not best friend. He's not I'm sure I'll always be my best friend. You know, when something happens, he's the first person I want to call and tell him about it. I want to be yours again, but I guess I'll never learn. Take me back now, life's so boring. Can I get back now, life's so boring. I want to be yours again, but I guess I'll never learn. Take me back now, life's so boring. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I mean, where to begin, really? The UPS thing. <laughs> you want to hear about UPS? I've, I talked about this on, on the Twitter, um, and people have been harassing UPS like crazy, which I love, but I've noticed they've stopped replying. And then I realized, what if UPS just blocks us? So then, I mean, I've never wielded my consumer power like this before. It's exciting. You know? so like, well, it, I feel it, like the Indy 88 thing was like a good sort of uh, test. Of, was, of, yeah. of the powers of the, the, the sort of, of military side? might of, of the nation. <laughs> so, so UPS um, yesterday finally called. You know, they picked up the computer on September 6th, the computer that in our move was completely destroyed. Like, like there's like I would six... argue it, it looks quite beautiful in its current state. <laughs> they they it turned does. it from a, a sort of practical machine into – in many ways, a, a sort of more expressive and meaningful work of art. I'm not going to lie, like as a sort of maybe Jeff Koons style modern art piece <laughs> yeah. that makes us question our relationship with technology, although that's already more advanced than anything Jeff Koons would ever do. Um, but, you know, some, something of his ilk. Watch, shots fired at Jeff Koons. Definitely, it's definitely up there as a, a piece where we sort of question it's our cootsie. relationship. Yeah, it makes us question our relationship with technology and it... As with any, if you want to turn anything into modern art, you just say that it plays with space, and that's all you have to say, <laughs> right. and that's what it does. It does do that, yeah. um, but it does not play with the space bar because I can't turn it on because they've <laughs> beaten the shit out of my computer. And so they picked up the computer on September 6th to do an investigation. I got a call yesterday, which yeah. uh, just for the sake of the story, I'll tell you, we're recording on the 24th. I got a call on September 23rd from a very kind lady at UPS who said... Hey, were there any um, unique stickers or anything on the computer that would help us identify it? Because the computer that they picked up 
to ship to themselves, uh, they've lost now. UPS yeah, is lost. Yeah, yo, UPS is good <laughs> at their job. <laughs> so they don't know where the computer is. And so, I don't know. I mean, is that better? Because when they find, they're probably going to find it and be like, you know, like all insurance people, they'll be like, it's not broken. <laughs> it's <laughs> right. An, yeah. it's, a, it's an art piece. <laughs> okay, so before we fully get into covers, I'm going to play the cover uh, music, intro music. We have oh, two shit. different choices. We have two different choices. I'm going to start alternating them. And then you send us more if you want. We can play different cover intro music every week. I don't give a Did fuck. Did we actually insert Please. this last week? Like, is this... Is this yeah, only I put my them first both, time I put hearing them it? both in. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not even going to play it for you. I'm uh, going to insert it after. So you know, you don't even get to hear it. You have I to fucking download listen the to the podcast like the rest of us. No. Yeah, exactly. In fact, I think <laughs> I think as this project moves forward, I'm going to take advantage of how you don't listen to it or edit it and really start creating <laughs> this like hostile environment for you that you're unaware like, of. Like totally. People will start <laughs> messaging me on Twitter about stuff that I know for sure that I would never say. <laughs> right. You're just fully sweet, sweet candying me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not only that, but just kind of like creating like we have like a sort of after Blink One Fifty Five after chat show that I plug on at the end, <laughs> where we just sort of like talk. We sort of deconstruct everything you said and decide whether or not you're actually a good person, <laughs> but based on what you said, we should actually take advantage of 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 that sort of format and do it for us. So the al- you know, the album Jesus. The episode comes out at midnight or whatever Eastern time, and then we do a, <laughs> we do a, a, a live chat show about what just happened, all the twists and turns. <laughs> Every show has yeah, an after I show mean, now, right? If anything, we need more hours of content. People will, people it's are starving enough. in the content desert that is Blake 155 <laughs> fandom. Okay, here's the actual cover music right now. Please. All right, we'll be back after the break with more covers here on Blake 155. Hit it. Never plugged in at all. Covers. Covers. You want me to drop some gospel on you and that will make you get your fix either way. I mean, it's definitely Christianity season, straight up. Thanks, <laughs> Kanye. It, I mean, I, I, and the pod, though. I mean, I think, like, we're going to talk about how the pod has influenced, like, larger, Kanye. more mainstream yeah. culture a lot in this episode. Yeah, specifically Kanye. I don't want to <laughs> give anything away. But there's no, like, I don't know, was Kanye, like, into God before the podcast? I'm going to go ahead and answer my own question and say no. <laughs> yeah, this is I a, mean, a brand new interest for him. <laughs> He was, like, college dropout Kanye was, like, you know, talking about God in the way that, like, um, I don't know, we pretend that we're actually punks. But he wasn't, like, truly, (laughs) you know, he wasn't true till So Jesus Jesus Walks was, like, us being, like, a tragedy or whatever. Like, it was just... Yeah, exactly. He was being a Sort of wrapping ourselves in the flag. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, so earlier this week, uh, Mark tweeted, if this tweet gets 100,000 RTs... I'm bringing back Sigmark. Um, and it was this cool photo of him, black and white on stage, Tom in the background. Just like something about smoking while playing is also just so obscene and ridiculous. It's just so like flagrant, you know? Like Sigmark is a badass. And so he shared this photo, and then of course, he said, si- Mark said Sigmark. I mean, what does that mean to everyone? Everyone's freaking the fuck out, thinking Mark's dead. I don't know. I don't even know. Were you, a- did you see Sigmark or did I tell you? Were you like, no, talking of course to Marty? I saw Sigmark. Yeah. <laughs> no, I saw, I saw <laughs> Sigmark and had the exact same, like, without, without you having to be like, holy shit, did you see this? Like, the same reaction of like, this is fucked. Like, it's, yeah. He, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? So everyone thinks that this means Mark listens to the pod because Sigmark is definitely something that only exists in the realm of the pod. Um, but unfortunately, I have to let everyone know something. And I think this might work against the idea of Mark being uh, ahead in a way. Um, because the I think a few weeks before, a week before, he had 
tweeted that somebody said he's like the most boring person they've ever met or some sort of like he was trying to joke around and and make be self-deprecating but then it was like it came across as like way too real and everyone was basically like yeah you are boring (laughs) because he later like (laughs) clarified like oh it's because i went to bed early not because like you know i'm the most boring guy ever whatever but with the pod account i had tweeted in reply bring back sigmark so that was like the week before and so i don't think that he listens to the pod i don't think he's listened to um, us talk about our buttholes for 4,000 hours or whatever <laughs> and then f- picked up on the nuance of Sigmark. Because also he probably would have started saying other much stupider things than Sigmark <laughs> if that was the case. I think he just I think, but it's still like kind of annoying because he didn't acknowledge the tweet. He just kind of like it went into his subconscious and then he mentioned Sigmark. And then Everyone started freaking out. Not only was like the pod freaking out and everyone was like being so annoying because that's what we do. Um, but then people were starting to like people were like tisk tisking him for bringing up smoking and, and uh, encouraging smoking. And so he was like, just so you know, quitting smoking is the best thing I've ever done. And then he just ended up deleting everything. So okay, it's still oh, like, really? <laughs> yeah, it's all gone. Like whenever he flirts with uh, with the nation, it, it gets deleted. But um but yeah, he still. There That's was a the kind of thing that makes he, me think that, like, you know, PC culture has gone too far. You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like <laughs> these SJWs just, you know, not letting anyone talk about. And when you smoking, say PC, is you mean my, uh, preventing cigarettes culture has gone too far. Yeah. This is a really boring episode so far. This is bad, eh? So <laughs> the song On Some Emo Shit by the band Blink-182, Josiah, we were excited about this, curious about it. There's the title. There's the fact that they are the sole writers on this song, the only song on Nine on which only the members of Blink-182 are credited. You listened to the album first. We did our Well, okay, of- first of all, I got something to say right there what because the fuck? You, you, it's true. They're the only three credited, and that is really interesting, but I just want to, like... I want to start off by saying that, like, yes, they're the only ones credited, but there is, you know, there's a fifth Beatle, there's a fourth member of Blink-182 specifically on this song, there's a fourth member, and I am referring, of course, to the city of New York itself. (laughs) Right, yeah. (laughs) So... The, the, yeah, it's it's true. We have to give credit where credit is due. I just don't want to blast to the, past to that all because five boroughs, uh, <laughs> at least exactly. one of which is called out by name in this in this song. <laughs> I mean, there are no shortage of of iconic songs about New York City, and this I would say cracks the top five. It's definitely yeah. I think this is the new um, Jay Z Alicia Keys. Oh uh, my god, Taylor Swift. I mean, what else is there? Even those are the, Those only, are the ones. only two, really. <laughs> JC Taylor Swift, <laughs> like that's it. We're not thinking back like past like five years. Um, no, because New I, York was like New York was too gritty back then. I'm talking. I only New York only got good in the last decade. Really, oh yeah, it if only you think got, about it, Giuliani like saved New York. And when people uh, are like, when you see when you see like a thing on TV and people are like, see this this Chase Bank here used to be a punk squad, and I think to myself. Well, that's great because if you need to take out cash, you can just go right there and you don't have to see all these gross punks. You can just take out cash and that's way more convenient. (laughs) Yeah. If I wanted a mortgage, what was I going to do? Go to the punk squad? That's fucking (laughs) insane. Welcome to Blink-155, the only... Wakes me up when you do that. (laughs) It's like (laughs) feeling really low energy and then I got this guy fucking yelling at me over here. That's it, man. That's what I'm here to do. You and all the <laughs> listeners in the nation. Good morning. I'm just gonna. I'm really gonna lean into the morning zoo crew side. I didn't of, ever. Of my yeah, like I feel like you're not really. I feel like you're like me. Uh, sort of. When if it was up to you, you'd maintain like a 12 year old summer schedule. Like you're not an oh, early riser, yeah. but you have such morning person vibes sometimes. That's that. Honest, honest, fucking god, dude. That's the first time you've said something that truly offended. Me. <laughs> Everything else, all the other japes and jollies we've enjoyed together, saying I, I feel like a morning person, even though you know for a fucking fact that I am not, because I'm still cool. I know, but even it's nighttime this is and now fucked. I feel no, like done, it's man. morning. I'm, fucking, I'm walking away right now. <laughs> yeah, you're probably going for a walk to get a fucking fresh baguette while the rest of the house is still asleep, <laughs> and there's steam coming off of it.
Damn, man, you really wanted to get down to business. Thankfully, we can talk about it. Yeah, because there's a lot to talk about because this is the, this is a first this week. Um, oh, God. Yeah, that's right. That's why. Okay, right. Yeah. This is, this is the first time this has happened um, in the 17 years we've been doing this podcast. But we are actually um, crowning an album, or I guess we're more uh, putting its feet in cement record, and throwing it into the finished, river. The record has finished crowning us. And now, is, <laughs> now we're giving birth. We're cutting the umbilical cord. <laughs> exactly. We're getting so old. And then I was thinking like, so the, yeah, right as of right now, there's definitely less than a year until the pod is over. There are so many hits coming up that we got to figure out, which is <laughs> insane. Next, the, the spreadsheet, as you have kind of updated it to just keep sort of all, like you've moved everything. So instead of being in alphabetical order, now it's just everything we haven't done up at the top. And it is literally just like bullshit as joke songs, covers, and all of the biggest Blink-182 <laughs> yeah, songs. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, there's a lot to figure out, but... Um, because this isn't a hit, we could do it. Like we've kind of been trying to plan how we're going to do these hits, mm-hmm. but because this one's not a hit, we're like, oh yeah, let's just do this one. Oh shit, this is the end of California Deluxe. I mean, what a journey it's been. This kind of become shorthand for something that we resent and aren't looking forward to. And that, I guess, it's good. The worst is over, but I almost feel like I have Stockholm syndrome now. <laughs> and now that that episode, we, we should, this is how we start looping back on ourselves. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Let's just go for it. Oh, it's good. This is just this is just a new, an original cover, but just a very straight instrument. I'm really starting to think it's pretty good. I can never wake up. I need to talk. I do not want to grow up. Do not want to end. Come on, it's like another another <laughs> party. Live for salary, die for a weekend. Take another Xanax. Having an affair with your girlfriend. Take your last breath. Count the time. Okay, do this part. Don't it's like too it. late. I'm trapped at the gates of heaven. Hit the match and start the fire. <laughs> I will have all my mistakes Will not give you what you take Seeing you burn in fire Okay, I've listened to it more times than you You apparently have I was like, I love the wire That's that's all I knew The rest of it, I have no fucking idea, man Well, I think that instrumental really worked with the Indonesian English lyrics You killed it, man That was amazing (laughs) This might be our worst episode. <laughs> no, no, no. That was definitely like an important moment in pod history, I think. is <laughs> So, uh... Friday Night Lights score that I think I'm going to leave it on in the background while we say goodbye to California Deluxe. Fuck, man. All right, well, just how, what are your final thoughts on the final song of California Deluxe, Wildfire by the band Blink-182? I will say this sincerely. It's really interesting and fun to do a project like this while also digging through, like, the scrap heap of a band. Like, if we mm. were... When you, if you do something like this and you only are talking about like the good stuff, it's it's not the same. But le, le, I like California Deluxe because it's like just more shit to help us try to understand this band. So I, I'm gonna miss it. I hope that they release all of the like demos and shit from Nine. God. And I think this song's really good. And I think also I, I'm starting to like feel a fondness for California era that I didn't before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just ended right there. Fuck. Now you don't get background music. Oh, so I just got to sit out here naked and just say, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. No, you give your final thoughts on California Deluxe, too. I mean, I, more more than any aspect of this project, was dreading having to do these songs. Because uh, as as was obvious today and, and sort of throughout our conversations about all of them, like I, I didn't spend any time with them because I thought they were shitty. And I think for the most part I was right, but again, one of the 
interesting things about a project list is like really being forced to like revisit and consider them and also like consider them in this sort of wider context that, you know, we've always been aware of, but that, you know, we, we have obviously sort of like now dedicated years of our lives to kind of trying to, to really map out. And so, so to have that opportunity to like engage with them and, and try to understand what this band was like trying to do in that moment, especially at a time that was like so critical to the kind of future of the band, like that this was, this is like two, two guys in particular, like trying to understand what their job is going to be for the rest of their lives. And, and so getting, getting a glimpse into, and I come back to the, to the bottom of the ocean episode, which I think was like when this really like was blown open for me. And and I feel so fucking stupid because I've done this twice where I can't remember the name of the guest who's the co-writer of that song. Um, oh yeah, I also forget at this point. Fuck, terrible. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The point is, like, you know, she was she was telling us about why she likes the idea of California Deluxe, and we had only shit on Simon Wilcox. It. Thank you so much, Simon Wilcox. Thank you, you so much. Say there was a skip. Uh, Sam didn't say that because he remembered. I did. I did. There was just uh, a, yeah, and then you <laughs> said it at the same time as well. We were like, um, but but she was like, no, this is a band like opening up their process. To us. And there's a lot of like cynical ways to view this record uh, in this like this version of the album, which I most mostly subscribe to. But I think like this has given me a, a kind of distinct appreciation for what what they were working through and what they were sort of trying to express. But mostly, I think kind of like what they were trying to achieve, like from a kind of like commercial and like longevity standpoint and so like that's been really really interesting and then this song fucking rocks like what the fuck <laughs> so what are we, how do we fucking start these at this point i think like that was I a feel fairly like run out of small good talk. impression i was kind of thinking that like i mostly lean on you i mean in every aspect of this podcast but like you know like a couple of crazy things happened to me on my way to the studio here today sam i'm like oh what what josiah tell me about it ha ha um and and you opening that way like fills me with terror for the next year like just like what (laughs) what's left well i gotta admit to you um i actually haven't been going to a studio this whole time i've just been uh Actually, in my home, the, they got the technology now. You can just do the right into your uh, computer. Well, knew, you can just do it that way. I knew you were recording from home previously, but then we obviously had a lot of conversations <laughs> about audio quality on this podcast, and I, I thought we agreed that you were going to, you know, um, that we were going to use right, the Patreon did, money, put in some effort, <laughs> and sort of get you into a into a proper kind of soundproof booth, I did, like me. I, take out a, I took out a personal loan from you. <laughs> yeah, um, line of credit. And I will, I will give you a breakdown of how I spent that uh, after after we talk. But sick. So uh, why I'm, in that scenario? Why would I be the only one to get? Uh, okay, actually, no, I'm not going to talk about this. <laughs> what the fuck? Now I'm really <laughs> intrigued. Well, no, because I'm implying that I'm already in a soundproof studio. Like that, I've already I done. Actually, investment. I will talk about this. I, I am going to talk. Wow. about this. There's something that's actually. There's, you asked if there's any housekeeping. And there is, okay. and it's actually existed for a really long time. Um, but the sound that I made with my mouth off the top is related to that. Um, I don't remember when this was, maybe like a year ago at this mm-hmm. point, but somebody pointed out that there was a fart sound in one of our episodes. Really? <laughs> yeah. There's like, I think Marsden pointed it out, and then I was talking to uh, my friend D Beat Chris, who is now my friend, actually, uh, not just a fan. <laughs> But anyways, um, yeah, Chris remembered it too. Uh, I wish I remember what episode, but there is a wow. phantom fart on the pod. And, and I remember, I never told you about this forever. Um, but when Marzen told me about it, I actually opened up. It was one of the weeks that I added and I opened up the file and I was able to see who's half of the recording. Is. So I know it's me. who dealt it. It's, I, I'm positive it was me, right? <laughs> Why are you positive? Just because I'm like a gassy boy. <laughs> well, I mean, I obviously am too, but um, who isn't, really? Right, like I was going to say, like my consumption habits, like just it, it's sort of what happens. You, are s- but <laughs> you have similarly, like even though your consumption habits are clean uh, in many ways, they're, they're certainly not like causing you no, you know, gastronomical uh, distress, right? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> I mean, I was hoping that you would sort of be more mysterious about it, and then we could keep it hidden. Oh, okay. Um, and no, sort of I've never farted, Josiah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was you, but it's like a very, it's a very nice waveform. It looks <laughs> like really, it seems like you aimed the mic at your butt I, while you I did, did it. What, like, what kind of, like, what kind of fart was it? It was actually, we were just talking about the movie The Lighthouse. It was one of, the, it was like one of those, like, really, like, <laughs> tight, like, just a tight little blast. Sick. Um, <laughs> so, Josiah, what are your final thoughts on the song Silver by the Band Blink-182 and the entirety of California? <laughs> this is nice. I came in at such a good time. Sick. I love, I love knowing that. I guess that's why they do first thought, best thought all the time. Because I love knowing that my first instinct is almost always exactly how I feel later on. Like I was, I thought that I would come back around and be like, oh, this song's actually good, but it fucking sucks, and it's so gross and <laughs> shitty. And I do not think that anyone should be saying four leaf clover in a song. So that's my final thoughts. As for California, it's been a great journey. I think California Deluxe was even more fun. And uh, I don't know. We're, we're going to be killing off more albums to come. It's going to get harder with each one, I think, to just ruthlessly execute it in the, <laughs> and let it bleed out in the street. Um, yeah, so you know, for me, I'm a little disappointed that we never got into the notion of sobriety. Um, but I do feel like maybe that's an aspect of, of your life that we plumbed fairly thoroughly um, in, in other perhaps better episodes. <laughs> well, I don't know if there are any episodes better than this one, but <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's also fair. Um, you know, for me, this song is is mostly dad that that cover by Ageless uh, from your hometown that kind of turned it around for me. But I'm I'm back I'm back in in the pit again, uh, hating this song, hating California. <laughs> Um, you know, <laughs> and hating the pod, <laughs> no, but, but blessed, blessed to be here sort of sharing, um, th- these excruciating moments together uh, with you and with the entire nation. Really uncomfortable, actually. <laughs> Don't to have like this kind it of, at it all. It becomes too intimate. <laughs> no, it's like I can I can feel us looking at each other when it plays. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care for it. So, one thing that's happening that you're not aware of is that uh, I mean, I only briefly made you aware of this, but at this point, wherever I go on the internet, wherever I log in, but I'll find out that there's a messaging service on this site that I wasn't aware even existed because I'm constantly getting messages that are about three paragraphs long of somebody saying, hey, uh, just want to let you know, don't want to burst your bubble, but um, unfortunately, uh, most of your episodes aren't on Spotify anymore. And like Mm. walking down the street and someone has, has hired a sky writer to write this message to me (laughs) at all. It's just everywhere I go, somebody is telling me that our episodes aren't on Spotify anymore. And I don't know what to say because I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Do you? Well, listen, I care because it affects the bottom line at this point. You know, (laughs) they estimate that roughly 20% of podcast listening occurs inside of the Spotify app. Now that's not currently a threat to the Apple podcast ecosystem, but it is certainly a change um, in listener behavior that we should be aware of. We should be tracking. And so to not be available on that particular platform is, you know, no doubt going to have a, a, you know, a a negative impact on our ability to attract, you know, premium tier advertisement, uh, advertisers and sponsors. (laughs) Yeah, so that is a huge one, and that is why uh, MeUndies has not been getting into me, me emails lately. But oh no! <laughs> um, and you're like friends with him now through the pod, right? Yeah, no, me and me and Sean Mendes are super tight because Sean Mendes listens to the pod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no, I want you to talk about the lawyer, but are you not allowed? Is it a no? Secret? I'm allowed. Didn't we already talk about this? Yeah, like I don't think the, we did. I don't. Think, we've been meaning to talk about it on mic forever, and we damn, have. We I, just keep. We keep talking in real life. It's fucking everything a, up. We gotta stop that. So yeah, so I you have to, your your real life pod friend. My is. real life pod friend is Steve, who's in my uh, my my phone is just Steve Castles Brock, um, the name of the law firm that he works for. <laughs> so I, don't, I can't shout out his whole last name, which I'm sure he's told me. And I feel like I talked about this on the pod before, and then he like messaged me his name. Did this none of this happen? I don't think so. Maybe it did. Who cares? We could just finish it now. Finish what? the sentence. Okay. So so I feel like I told this story. Did this story really not happen? Basically, like I was at the Shawn Mendes show. 
and and I was talking to my boss's wife, and and someone came up to me and was like, "Hey, hey, man, very sorry to bother you, but a uh, big fan of the pod." And I was like, "This is the fucking best thing that's ever happened to me." Um, you know, <laughs> let my boss's wife know that I'm like a really legit dude. I have cool projects outside of work, like a Blink One Eighty Two podcast. And uh, and then he revealed that um, yeah, that he's he's Sean Mendes his lawyer. And I was like, "This is the, this is the coolest getting pod recognized." At but the you've Shawn like a, show, you've hung Shawn you've, you've hung out with him like yeah. since then. Like and then you're we like had tight with Sean Mendes's lawyer. Yeah, like we're we're definitely like I'm gonna, I'm going to start um, also doing deals for Sean Mendes. I think. <laughs> yeah, like, but yeah, bring like, up we, the... we hung out. I think we're going to hang. Out. I actually owe him a text. Um, hopefully, I will have responded uh, by the time <laughs> this episode comes out. If not, you know, I'm I'm just bad at getting back to people, dude. Yeah, trust me, Sean Mendes lawyer. You're not you're not the only one, my friend, waiting <laughs> on this guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Uh, I, uh, did we really not talk about this? I, f- I feel like we might have, but not not with enough detail. Like I, I love the idea that you're like broing down with Sean Mendes' lawyer, like hanging <laughs> out on cool the regular. Guy. <laughs> yeah. Like you guys are like playing squash together or something. Oh um, baby! Or, or I'm gonna be going through all of the Blink One Eight Two type beats that are out there. This is a free Blink One Eight Two trap beat produced by the Ripper, Ooh. but it is also just built off of "Remember to Forget Me." So feel free to spit some bars on top of it. Anyway, if Sam, you want to talk about Skrilla or something? <laughs> let it go. Yeah. It really does not sound like Blink One Eight Two in any way. I mean, this is just kind of the song. Yeah, also, what is the, how is this a trap beat? The Ripper? What's your problem here? Hey, yo, Ripper, where the beat's at? Oh, what? This is why I'm hot, hot. This is why I'm hot, hot, yeah. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot, hot. Huh? This is why I'm hot, hot. This is why I'm hot, woo. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot, hot. I'm hot, cause I'm fly. Fly you ain't, cause you not, not. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot, hot. I'm hot, cause I'm fly. Fly you ain't, cause you not. Mims, this is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. I don't gotta rap. I could sell a mill saying nothing on the track. I represent New York, I got it on my back. Say we lost it, so I'ma bring it back. I love the dirty, dirty, cause show me love. The ladies start to bounce as soon as I hit the club. But in the Midwest, they love to take it slow. So when I hit the age, I watch them get it on the flow. And if you need it, hi- no, you know where you going? I, I did, almost said written... Sacktown. <laughs> I was very, very close to mentioning Sacramento. I was curious if you were going to say uh, some other rap type words that you're not supposed to say. <laughs> Can you um, imagine? I don't think you did. if I just like blanked and just was like reading and, and just said it. It sounds like a fake pop punk song, and I kind of like it. But I just feel like the drums are doing too much. And then I started thinking the drums actually kind of remind me of like clocks by Coldplay like leading with the snare gives it this like kind of alternative sound that is not pop punk at all and then I got to thinking maybe all music either all rock music is either Coldplay or U2 and that's kind of the difference between this version of <laughs> right. Blink-182 and Tom DeLonge's version and the U2 version is so much better that's interesting yeah that seems possible those are the two rock genders basically exactly <laughs> It, yeah, I mean they're genre fluid, if you will. <laughs> yeah, because apparently that's okay now. What the fuck? Yeah, come on. I've been Spotify, trying to be so better. careful for years. You're telling me I could have been out here do making better. these kinds of jokes. No, do I'm, better. I'm mostly mad about all of the many various fluid jokes I've been just biting my tongue. Um, the the next year of the podcast <laughs> is going to be uh, just wildly <laughs> shitty for anyone. Well, I think the goal uh, is to get canceled by the end of it. I think so. That's hopefully be, hopefully before it. To be totally honest. Welcome to Blink-155. I cannot believe we've actually managed to do this, but I want to welcome to the show for a guest segment, uh, possibly my favorite member of the band. Welcome, Scott Rayner. Welcome, Scott. 
It sounds like his mic is not working. Hmm. So uh, is there is it mute? Maybe uh, maybe yeah. If you, maybe you've got mute on. I do that sometimes <laughs> when I'm like on a call, but I need to pee because I hydrate so much. So maybe maybe Scott's uh, a, a fellow hydration king. Look, is Scott here right now? Currently, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, in the way that like God is always with you. Scott right, is is similarly <laughs> like you 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 you. You keep Scott in your heart uh, all year round. <laughs> it's Scott season. Uh, no, here's what. Here's the thing. Here's the deal. Let's break it down. We've been kind of like, we've known that we could almost get Scott for a long time because Colleen Green is friends with Scott, um, mm-hmm. and she kind of like I think even told you like, yeah, I can I can help out. I can try to hook it up. Um, and then I was also like kind of desperately messaging her being like yo can you bug scott for us and she was like i will but the timing has to be perfect you know which of course respect so anyways the wraith because they wanted a free <laughs> guitar <laughs> gave me <laughs> josiah he is scott rayner's <laughs> gmail address i swore not to share it with anyone i will not share it this is protected content i emailed him and i said i'm a huge fan of your work and i know i knew that scott was like kind of a bit more of a punk so i said like this podcast discusses Blink-182 within the broader context of punk. And then I mm. name-dropped, like, a, all the cool people we've talked to. Here's, the, here's what happened. It, it was, let me see. I was like, kind of like, oh, he's never going to write back. He wrote me back 13 hours later. Not bad at all. He said this to me. That's a very reasonable response time. Good morning. This, and this is the real Scott Rayner, so the, I'm telling you. He's on the episode. Good morning, Josiah. I hope you are well. I'd be happy to discuss it with you, my experience with Blink-182, anytime. Please feel free to email me any questions you may have. What you decide to do with the answers I give is up to you. You can make them public or not. And then he said, I respect journalists and journalism. It's just not for me. You have questions as a fan, I'll answer them over email. So, and then he wrote, thanks, dog, and it was spelled D-A-W-G. Best, Scott. Yes! He doesn't say cheers, which is great. Uh, it's an interesting sentence. I respect journalists and journalism. It's just not but, for me. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I mean, if anything, I don't respect journalists, but I do but think it that is it's for necessary. you, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of the opposite in that way. He's the, the yeah. yin to my yang. Um, mm. So I could, f- I could tell he was kind of pushing back by saying email, and I said to him, this was uh, – 15 minutes after he wrote back, because that shows my level of desperation. So I, I said, thank you so much for getting back to me, Scott. Since it is for a podcast, would it be possible to do it over phone? It would be a lot easier to use if we had some audio. I could even send questions ahead of time if you want to be prepared, or I could let you have final say of what happens in the audio. We could edit it if you say something you don't want to release. I promise it'll be super chill. It's just that it's a little hard to make written questions work for audio. Um <clears throat> And then, I like this is you finally coming to terms with the fact that this podcast is for listening only. <laughs> yeah, well, this I just, is an important evolution in your I own just, relationship to the. Pod. I really didn't want to be uh, reading emails from Scott Rayner on mic um, because I thought that would make for bad content, and here we are right now. Um, so when I did my pushback, he wrote back and said, and this is where I started to think I don't know about Scott's email email etiquette because he wrote Josiah, my offer stands, sir. Kind regards, Scott. And he capitalized sir. I mean, I think that's a lot worse than saying cheers, to be honest. No, that's super respectful. <laughs> My offer stands, sir. Like, are we having a duel with guns? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're just engaged in an, an exchange of goods. Uh, <laughs> knock up SG for email answers to questions about Blink-182. So, <sighs> I... I gave up. So it's a barter, really. Yeah, the bartering he won. I sent, I emailed him questions. Uh, Scott Rayner, the barter bastard. <laughs> the barter bastard. So I emailed him questions, and uh, unfortunately, he not only you – because know, remember in his first email, he said, he said I'd be happy to talk about my time in Blink-182. Well, I decided to do a mix. I do remember that. I was like, okay, yeah. I get one shot here with Scott Rayner. I need to give him a mix of like hard-hitting questions and sort of fun questions. And um, he really used the fact that it was email to his advantage. So the first question – how did you get into music? What was your introduction to punk? I said to Scott Rayner. And he said, I just do. Always did. The first punk band I liked was the Misfits. So I guess, I think what he's saying is he was always into music. Um, 
And then I said, how did you develop your style as a punk drummer? You have a very distinctive style with a lot of urgency and intensity. We love it. And he said, thank you. I... <laughs> we love it. You fucking ass kiss. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I play fast for fun, he wrote. Um, <laughs> so that's good. And then <laughs> I said, don't we all? <laughs> so far, this is very relatable. <laughs> I, of course I'm going to kiss his ass. I fucking love Scott Rayner so much. I know. And then I so I was like, okay, we're 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 easing into it. So I said, when you were in Blink, were you worried about the idea of selling out? According to Wikipedia, you were hesitant to sign to a major label, or is that a myth? Um, and he opted to just delete that one when he replied <laughs> to me. So so then uh, the next question was, what exactly happened when you parted ways with the band? Was it their decision or yours? Um, and that one also was strangely absent from his <laughs> reply email. Uh, <laughs> Have you listened to Blink-182 since Parting Ways? Do you have any thoughts on the newer material with Matt Skiba? Uh, he forgot to answer that one. Have you <laughs> ever spoken with Travis Barker? No answer. Do you keep in touch with Mark or Tom? No answer. If you could go back and do anything different, would you? Uh, no answer. How did you end up playing in The Wraith? I heard their demo and knew that they will be a mega fan favorite. Davey and Kaz and Paul are all great guys and exceptionally gifted. I don't like to use the word genius, but it does apply here. So he answered wow. that one. Um, and then finally, what kind of music are you into? Sorry, was there an exclamation mark there? No, it just appeared. He's not an exclamation mark man Okay, because you, you sort of read. <laughs> uh, yeah, just was, drums, uh, sir. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of emphasizing the sort of the, um, what kind of music are you into these days in terms of your own listening habits? Um, and he said, I like the Ramones. And Colleen Green, she is the greatest songwriter of our time. No exaggeration. She doesn't seem to know, or she knows and pretends not to. Probably the latter. <laughs> That's how it, it finished. So if, if nothing yeah. else, us speaking to Scott Rayner, like Scott Rayner's sort of whole vibe is just like having a conversation back and forth with Colleen Green uh, via, <laughs> via email and interviews and whatnot. But to be honest, I mean... We were always saving this song for Scott Rayner, and I was a little disappointed. We did. Like, this, technically, we got him, right? Like, that's fair to say. I mean, I think we can put him in the episode title. We got Scott Like, these Rayner. are answers. What What is having some... What, is, what does it mean to have someone, Josiah? <laughs> oh, wow. To have and to hold? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe we are now legally married to <laughs> we've, Scott. We've... I remember the hand, uh, my old, as we all know, <laughs> yeah. I guess... Christian the Locust kind of band. <laughs> what a mess. Was the hand like the, God, like the hand of God or Jesus's hand or was it just like... Uh, well, no, even the band name was kind of bullying actually because our keyboardist, like one of his hands didn't work because he was pulled out by his hand when he was born. Oh so he God. like, his hand didn't have any movement in it and he played keyboard and uh, he used to like <laughs> let us like punch it and it didn't hurt him. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, being a kid rocks. <laughs> but we played we played a show in Vancouver, like a, a hip one. I think we played with like that band Femme Fatale that was uh, the other Death from Above band. Yeah. And I remember reading a review after it in like a local punk paper and it said that the hand was the ugliest band in Vancouver. <laughs> they just, like a review called us ugly. So, <laughs> that alone. And that even I That really does capture, like, yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes it captures the exact magic feeling of being alive as a young person and feeling so lost and scared and also, like, there's limitless possibility. And then it so easily turns into feeling like you're going to blow up a school, this song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those ideas are more intimately connected than maybe we ever felt like they, <laughs> they were. <laughs> Leave a light in your bedroom. When I stumble down the hall Got nowhere left to go to Guess I shouldn't go anywhere at all And I hear what you're saying But I still keep banging away Left it on in my windshield Saying that you shouldn't have to waste another day of my life Get me out of my head Empty, left for dead I'm gonna make it so complicated There's no point in a conversation So listen, before you tell me who directed it, 
because I know yes. this is going to take a little while. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna pee. I'm not gonna do anything better than that. The, the lead up really made me feel like I was gonna do something <laughs> awesome. But I was like, I want to be comfortable for this conversation. Is yeah, what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. All right. So, who directed the music video, Josiah? I just went and I was just when I got some Doritos from the cupboard. Oh. <laughs> You're just feeling snacky. I was like, every just the word Doritos alone. I'm like, God damn. It definitely, it, it makes you want a munch. I don't know what to do now, because, I, I mean, it's hard. I, I talk so much. Or maybe this will help me give you some space to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I'm, I'm so glad to finally be able to sort of spread my wings and fly. <laughs> I don't know, just like when you hear the word, <clears throat> when you hear the word Doritos, don't you just want Doritos? Yeah, no, I'm like, but I'm going to wait until the podcast is done. Well... Because I respect be, you. <laughs> that would be a good bit, but apparently not. So, <laughs> so pissy over here. No, listen, it's a good bit for you. <laughs> Thank you. You're just, I'm sorry I can't offer you one. I know. I, mean, just, I wish I, I could. jealous. That's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I could hand you one, but mm. we don't have the technology yet. This is uploaded by Tube Ferret 55 Ooh. days ago. Oh, no, sorry. Wait, what? Oh, that – no, never mind. This is uploaded three years ago. That 55 days is his – Current oh. tally. So, of so not wait. Okay. Tapping. So just to be clear, so he posted this three years ago. He's on no fat, but he clearly uh, he uh, he regressed. He relapsed. He is fapped. He has fifty five days ago. But I mean, that's pretty good. Basically, the the point of this post here is that, um, and the word better days is in here somewhere. That's how I found it. And, and this is the no- this is the normal tone of the pod again. If you're here from Pitchfork or from Stereo Gum, this is what we do. Uh, all the time. It's not actually cultural criticism at all. No. It's just it's a- two men having a <laughs> sort of blackout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and it's shockingly popular. <laughs> exactly. Just underappreciated in the mainstream, you know? Yeah. Like, again, as I'm, as I'm uh, command effing on NoFap <laughs> to find the title of this song in a post about a different song... I'm realizing now that I opened this episode by saying that we deserve more mainstream praise for our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Who else is going to talk? I agree. Who else is <laughs> it's fearlessly it talking about r slash no fat? <laughs> I think there was like in the lobby, there was just like a million copies of his book that were hardcover. I'm like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna trade these in at the used bookstore when I get home. Mm-hmm. So I just like took a bunch of them. But I'm like, why does Norman Lear straight up look like Johnny Knoxville in old guy makeup? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he, like, he kind of really does. does. Like put like, that man like in a wheelchair a and push him down a hill. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> it's the only. It's the only right thing to do. I think we got to like respect the people who care about this podcast. Exactly to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not out of my fucking mind. But, All right. You know. Let's get it going here. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Do the thing. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Blink-155, the only Blink-182 podcast recording months and months of podcasts inside of two days of uh, just like a, a pressure cooker of content, um, y- you know, personality clashes. <laughs> uh, Personal crises. Uh, behind yeah, the scenes uh, turmoil. <laughs> yeah, like this. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? I don't know. So I this thought is, that I would feel worse by now. Like I, on top of the fact that we've done a full month of podcasts, I think in a week. I'm pretty sure it's been one week that we've done four episodes. If you consider last week, I think we recorded late in the week and exclusive. And we, we did, did an and unnecessarily t- long exclusive. And I just appeared on my friend Chris James' Twitch stream tonight. So, and, so like I've just been also- doing content for no reason. <laughs> We also, sorry, to be fair, we did two full episodes and actually two exclusives because I believe buried inside of one of the full oh, episodes yeah. is a Next week. That's so, true. Next week? What the fuck? <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> well, are we actually? Yes. Good <laughs> God. Yeah, because right now uh, is, oh, we, can finally, this is... we can finally do the little joke because it's it hasn't been time yet, but we can finally do the joke of what the joke? famous uh, sync line. It's gonna be March. <laughs> it's March now. This is what happened. This is we've got a severe case to- of actual March madness. 
<laughs> it is in my brain. Um, it <laughs> that is no one's talking about this. I know there's a certain virus sweeping the nation. Yes, yeah, freaking um, uh, Bud Light Lime virus. I think Christ. by the time this comes out, those jokes will have gone full circle, kind of like my wife. You think Bud Light Lime's going like, to... <laughs> the coronavirus jokes will be... I mean, then again, also, the world could be over. But That's the out. thing. Is like, but I'm willing to we, place my bets. We could have this, like, you know, jokey JP pod when, like, I, who knows what is left. <laughs> I'll think about the times she kissed me after class and she put up with my friends. I acted like an ass. I ditched my lecture to watch the girls play soccer is my picture still hanging in her locker. I haven't been this scared in a long time. And I'm so unprepared So here's your valentine Bouquet of clumsy words A simple melody This world's an ugly place But you're so beautiful to me And, and also the way that Mark Hoppus pronounces what I would normally say bouquet And I know that I pronounce words wrong but I would say a bouquet of flowers, would you not? Uh, bouquet? I'd say a bouquet, bouquet, yeah I would say bouquet Bo You would say bouquet? fuck? Bouquet. 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 Listen, bouquet. I'm not gonna lie. I have not said the word bouquet out loud a lot, so I, I'm not. I'm not confident in saying that I'm right and you're wrong here. But bouquet definitely feels because I'm usually wrong, but I think pronounce it. Let's see. Bouquet. <laughs> so are we both wrong. It's bouquet. That. Volumes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Google says this. Bouquet. 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 Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's holy shit. Okay. Here, let me slow it down for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like that you. Let me slow it down for you, real quick. Like, <laughs> chopped and screwed. Okay. <laughs>